Hello! Today we're going to take a look at Starfield's skill system. First we'll talk about how the system works, then discuss some of the synergies you can get between different skills in order to maximize their impact. Special thanks goes to Bethesda for the review key, all opinions and footage are mine. Bethesda has been simplifying their skill systems over the last few games. There's no attributes that you can pick, the game internally tracks things like persuade and pickpocket chances. But you as a player can't affect them other than by picking skills or getting temporary buffs from consumables. You get skill points every time you level and as I suspected during my preview, you can have all the skills. There's no such thing as a skill blocking you from getting another skill. Every skill has 4 levels and you can get the first level just by spending a skill point. But to upgrade a skill you need to meet a condition and then you can spend a skill point to upgrade it. So if you want to upgrade your lock picking, you can do that by picking locks and then spending a skill point to upgrade the skill when you reach the goal. Skills are also grouped by type and tiers. You can freely get any from the first tier, but the other tiers require you to spend so many points in the group before you can get them. So if you want to get every skill to level 4, you need to get over 300 levels. But if you look at the skills, you can see some obvious synergies between many of them. Some skills just complement each other. For example, boxing from the physical group makes you punching more powerful. But to punch someone you have to get close. So gymnastics and fitness help you close the distance to enemies. Boost packs from the tech group also help by letting you fly. Martial arts gives you bonuses to unarmed combat, like better criticals and the ability to disarm enemies. Then Neuro Strikes further enhances that with stun and knocking down enemies nearby. If you use Concealment, you can sneak attack enemies for up to 10 times melee damage and upgrading Sneak makes it easier to stay hidden to get that bonus. And of course you're likely to take damage, so you can take perks to reduce how much physical and energy damage you take, plus the rejuvenation perks can heal you as you play. It seems that the devs explicitly wanted to make unarmed combat a real option because these synergies are not happening by chance. You can also take advantage of chems and foods to buff your resistance to damage and your oxygen use while you get close enough to uppercut enemies. The first two T's of the combat group are all about buffing your damage with weapons. There's four skills to buff by type of damage. They cover ballistic, melee, laser and explosive damage. Then you've got weapon specific damage boosts. So for example, you can choose to boost rifles regardless of what type of damage you do. The two types of skills give you a damage boost and some extra abilities that suit that type of weapon. So for example, melee skills give you the ability to heal from killing enemies. They stack, so if you have a laser rifle, it gets benefits from the laser and rifle skills for up to 60% extra damage plus faster fire rate and the chance to set enemies on fire. The last two tiers are all about buffing weapons, especially the chance to do critical hits and what effects they have. You can get some pretty good synergies. Marksmanship gives you a big boost to the chance of doing a critical. Then add sharp shooting for extra damage and you can really stack the damage. Then stack the damage multipliers from the stealth and concealment skills and you can get 4 times damage multipliers on stealth shots. Basically, the good old stealth archers are back from Skyrim. Armor penetration softens up enemies and crippling takes enemies out of fights early. It's well worth stacking the synergies from this group if you use weapons. Spacesuit design and weapon engineering from the science group let you get better armor and weapons, so they have a direct influence on how well you can fight. It's just like Skyrim, investing in the ability to craft your own gear pays off. There's two skills that are related to boost packs under the tech group. You have to have at least the tier 1 skills in order to fly during combat, but you can specialize to get even more advantage. Boost packs are very useful as a way to improve your mobility. It lets you get around obstacles and get the high ground during combat. There's not many synergies in this group because this group basically replaces what the speech skill would normally do in most games. You have skills for persuasion which makes NPCs do things for you, intimidation which makes enemies flee or instigation which makes enemies fight their own friends. All of these are distinct and unrelated to each other. 
So just because you can bribe someone, it doesn't mean that you can bargain well. So if you want to make use of speech type options, then you'll have to invest in quite a lot of different skills to get the same result. But a good alternative is that you can have your companions speak on your behalf during dialogues. So if you specialize in combat, you may want to take a companion with soft skills that can help cover up your weaknesses. If you're looking to invest in industry, then you should not overlook the scanning skill. More levels reveals more minerals from the planetary view, and that information allows you to choose better spots for your outposts. You can still pick a decent looking spot and hope that you get all the minerals you want, but scanning makes it far more likely that you'll pick a better spot. Once you've got a good spot, the planetary habitation and outpost engineering skills allow you to set up more outposts, even in hostile environments where you couldn't if you didn't have the skill, and research better buildings for your outposts. And special projects will allow you to make your own exotic components for complete self-reliance. You can also assign crew members to help your outposts perform better, and the outpost management from the social group lets you assign more crew to outposts for better results. The tech group has a lot of skills that complement space combat. You can get stronger shields, do more damage with your weapons, be more maneuverable, and so on, without having to actually upgrade your ship. These are particularly useful for focusing on space combat. They work by boosting your ship's capabilities, but if you really want to make your ship powerful, you also want to get the starship design skill to unlock the best ship mods. If you can get both the best ship in your class and the largest buffs from your skills, that will go a long way towards winning every space combat. You can also borrow skills from your crew by assigning them to your ship, and the ship command skill from the social group will allow you to take even more. But you should keep in mind that the crew's skills do not stack, only the highest skill level applies, so try and avoid duplicating crew skills if you can. So there you are. Many of the skills in Starfield are very similar to what's already in previous Bethesda games like Fallout 76 and Skyrim. In many cases they're literally the same, and you should recognize many of them if you play Fallout 76. But unlike 76, you have no limits to what skills you can pick. You can literally have them all. Make sure that you look at the synergies between cards to get the most benefit, because you can get quite a lot of impact from picking complementary skills early on. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.